Hey, Rick Says here. Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I hope to provide entertaining conversations with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz to get their stories, tips, strategies, productivity, tricks, and ideas that you can apply and take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. This episode is with my longtime friend and partner in many outdoor adventures, Eagle Creek Director of Sales, Tim McGuire. Tim tells us about his first exposure to the outdoors and adventure travel and offers some great advice for anyone wanting to get into the adventure travel biz. I think you'll like this one. Hey guys, today I'm speaking with Tim McGuire from Eagle Creek. Welcome to the show, Tim. Hey, Rick. What's happening Good. down there? Oh, doing good. Life in SoCal is not bad. No, <laughs> no complaints here in Carlsbad. That's right. Carlsbad's a nice spot. I spent many years there, as you know. You did. Yeah. Uh, so what's going on these days with you? You're still busy with Eagle Creek. What's uh, anything exciting happen on the horizon on that front? Yeah, Eagle Creek's great. Been, uh, you know, back now four years. Uh, we'll get into some of the details later, I'm sure. But, yeah. um, you know, worked here in the 80s and early 90s and left for about 18 years and now been back uh, almost four. And um, somebody, I think Gabe or Jeff said you're a rebound creaker. <laughs> you're a b- boomerang or something. Boomerang. They call me. Boomerang. <laughs> Yeah, so no, that's going well. Family's great. Uh, we're empty nesters, Julie and I now, so kind of enjoying this new stage in our life. And yeah, cool. Getting, getting outdoors a lot, and um, yeah, so right on. that's what's up. Well, let's start with your first exposure to the outdoors. What was that like? Yeah, different. I've, you know, I've listened to a few of your, your podcasts and some of your guests, and uh-huh. I think, you know, took, a for me, a, a, a much different path, I think, than than most um, I literally had never backpacked, camped, spent a <laughs> night outdoors in my life. Wow! Until I was 21 years old, um, I was a uh, happened to be a senior at San Diego State, and um, most of my time had been spent there working on a business degree. I was, I, I think they called us yuppies back then, <laughs> um, working towards a successful career and, you know, probably selling copiers or fax machines. And <laughs> right. uh, also happened to uh, be on the soccer team, played soccer yeah. for SDSU for a few years. Cool. And, um, but um, to, in order to, to, to get my degree, I needed to take a couple of college electives. And so just looking through the, the school program, I remember trying to find an elective that was, you know, easy and easy and um, fun. hopefully, fun and help my grade point average a bit so i came across a class that i i it, it, it kind of puzzled me it was called wilderness and the outdoor experience so huh. i had no idea what that meant but <laughs> it sounded easy and fun so i signed up for it and i remember going uh the first day uh it was held in a actually a large auditorium type room so about i want to say about 400 seats and wow I'm, i made sure to sit well towards the back so <laughs> if if if, if if I wanted to get out of there and bail, uh, I could do so. <laughs> and um, uh, as I sat and watched, uh, you know, our professor walked into the room, walked down the aisle. A small little dog followed him, and uh, it was happened to be a guy. I think uh, a lot of your listeners might know is a uh, professor Jeff Saul. I was going to say, was it Jeff? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And um, he proceeded to tell a story. Yeah. And it was about a, a trip that he and a friend and. Uh, I think one other person had taken down to Patagonia to uh, attempt an unclimbed route on Mount Fitzroy. And wow. um, just, you know, again, this is all brand new to me. And he's showing slides of their snow cave that they lived in for weeks. And, had you, had you, know, you been to a national park or anything? I mean, nothing? N- nothing. Wow. No, my, my dad was uh, military, U.S. Air Force, yeah. uh, lived in England for a long time as a kid and yeah. just moved around the country and just was never something that, um, we, we was, at least I understood Didn't that my family close considered... to a national park. That's, no, that's impressive. No, <laughs> no, not even. And, um, I don't know what we did. I, I can't even, just, I couldn't even tell you the vacation that we went on as a family and not, right. not, not digging my parents at all, but yeah, um, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. just sort of the, the circumstance of the time and wow. uh, our family. But, um, 
but anyway, so I'm now in this class watching Jeff tell these, you know, this amazing story of just horrible conditions and <laughs> this, uh, this attempted climb. And on the descent, um, his, his best friend actually dies. Oh my God. And, um, I'm watching this going, I want to do that. <laughs> Not die. You want to kill right? your best friend? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, not not die. Right, it's, right. It, just, it was just so fascinating to me. So I was immediately absorbed and um, and part of the class. In, in order to to uh, get your grade, you had to go on an outing. Oh, and cool. Write a, and and write a journal about it. Wow. And so uh, again, I'm watching these slideshows from various presenters. And so ignorantly, my very first outing, my very first time outdoors by myself. <laughs> I took a Greyhound bus. I don't. I think it was because my car wasn't running at the time. From uh-huh. San Diego to Lone Pine, <laughs> and um, and climbed Mount Whitney. Holy cow! That was your first yeah. l- by yourself. Yeah, by myself. Wow. And um, I want to say it was it was late at this was probably August, early September, or something. So right, right. it was a fall class, and uh, didn't have any real issues. I was in pretty good shape, of course. And- Did you have any anybody? You know, did you talk to anybody about what to take, how long it was going to Yeah, okay. well, that's, yeah, so that sort of, you know, sets up, tees up the, the next part of the story, which is I had to rent the gear, right? So oh, okay, right. Um, I looked around. Uh, in those days, you looked in a phone book. And right. You couldn't couldn't Google it, but yeah, I, had, right. I looked in a phone book and found out about a store not too far from San Diego State called Adventure 16. And, gotcha. Uh, and uh, we'll never forget that day. I remember walking or, you know, driving down and walking into the store and, um, it was almost like, you know, a wizard of Oz moment where you just <laughs> walk outside and I walk into this kind of nondescript building yeah. and all of a sudden there's a cabin in front of me and yeah. I'm listening to bird tapes and crickets and the smell of pine old, trees. <laughs> yeah. There's an old dog and exactly. They've got campfire <laughs> memories burning and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. And, uh, and just the greatest people. And, um, so that was my first exposure to a 16. And, wow. um, and so, uh, while I'm still in school, I, um, now into spring, um, got, got familiar with a 16 and, uh, learned that they were looking to hire some people for their, um, mother's day swap meet. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, so I reached out to them, applied and got a phone call that, uh, I was hired. Wow. I'm all excited. I'm like, wow, you know, it's great. Like one, I got a job and it, 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 it looks to be in a, in a business that's something that's something I really going to enjoy at a toy store. And, yeah. um, yeah. And then, um, two days later they called me back and said, never mind. What? And yeah, they, um, apparently one of the assistant managers brother was going to be in town and he was offered oh, uh, the position to do it. So mm. completely disappointed. Yeah. Um, and I was, uh, telling a friend of a friend, um, a girl named Jeannie Prentice, some, some folks, some of the listeners may remember yeah, her. Jeannie Prentice, she was um, in the Baja X business for a long time. Baja Expeditions, yeah. and she had heard my story about how <laughs> disappointed I was, and so she's like, that's not right. Um, I'm going to go tell the manager. Uh, manager at the time was Gail Meadows, I believe, huh. and um, out of pity, I believe, <laughs> they uh, – they called me back again and said, Tim, we're sorry. We would, we're looking for a person. We'd love to hire you. Wow. So I took what I thought would be a part-time job kind of going into the summer yeah. and uh, ended up working there five years Amazing. and would uh, um, you know, eventually work into a store manager position and ultimately um, take on a role as adventure travel director. Yeah, so um, I was going to ask you that. So how did you get exposed to adventure travel? Obviously through A16, and I guess the Jeff story tied a little bit of adventure travel into it. Yeah, so he, you know, he definitely uh, inspired me and, and, and you know gave me that passion to right. push myself, be bold, take risks, um, get outside of your comfort zone. And so you know, I was at a time in my life. You know, it was also this period where. Uh, again, a little unsure from a career standpoint what I wanted to do. My right. father passed. My father passed away, and um, you know I think like a lot of 20, 21 year olds just trying to figure out what I want to be, how you know how I'm going to define my life. And so this was all again just um, all <laughs> consuming. You know I became I have sort of a, a tendency to go OCD on on things, and you'll hear probably some of those other stories in a bit. But yeah. um, so all of a sudden I'm all in, I'm an outdoor guy. I've got a job at A16. Um, I'm helping out with wilderness outings. So mm-hmm. working with guys like Michael Hodgson, Mike Wallenfels, Kenji, Jeff Sheets, yeah. running, you know, within a year, um, scary as it sounds, I'm now 
leading people or taking people into the wilderness, <laughs> teaching them backpacking skills, map and compass skills, basic right. rock climbing, all of that, cross country skiing. And um, uh, I did that for about a year and then ended up moving from the Mission Valley store down to Horton Plaza. They, yeah. uh, um, they had, I think, four or five stores at the time. And this was a, a new uh, direction for them having a, a, a store in a mall. And quickly they figured out it was a little bit different clientele. These weren't hardcore backpackers looking right. for gear. Right. These were downtown business people shoppers. who were just shoppers. <laughs> and um, so they weren't quite getting the whole map and compass class backpacking basics approach to the outdoors. They just wanted to sign up and go do something, mm -hmm. something fun and adventurous. So um, John D. Mead, um, myself and my, uh, Michael Hodgson, um, kind of got together and said, well, how do we, how do we reach them? How do we connect with them? And it was more through, um, to identifying tour operators that could, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. get them exposed to, to different types of trips. And mm -hmm. so I think our first partner was Sobek Expeditions. Right, uh, we flew right. up to Angel's Camp, met with, uh, that team up there and, uh, eventually created what would be called the Adventure Travel Center, um, in all of the Adventure 16 stores where we would again, coordinate with tour operators, backroads, bicycling, Sobek, mountain travel, um, hot air balloon companies, state parks. And uh, it became a draw for customers to come in and um, get exposed to, to these type of activities. Right, right. And um, yeah, so, that, yeah. yeah, so within three years now of taking this class, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally You're on an the expert. top. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm standing on the top of Denali. Uh, with a group that I had coordinated. Uh, I was rafting the Zambezi River in Africa, yeah. doing trips down the Baja, kayaking. And um, so quite the transition in, in a short amount of time. But uh, but at that point, yeah, I'm definitely all in outdoor guy. Yeah, yeah it must have been and, super fun, I'm sure. Yeah, it was. We had and, a good team uh, at A16 back in those days. That was very fun. For sure. And yeah. of course, the idea was for A16 is that by doing this, by um, – exposing people to trips, giving slideshows, talks about various opportunities. Right. Um, we would sell more gear. Right. Um, they would come in and they'd need the, the products to, to be comfortable. Sure, because every time you go on a Sobek or somebody's trip, they give you a gear list, right? You need yeah. this, that, and the other. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and it turned out, coincidentally enough, is the gear that we sold the most of was a brand called Eagle Creek. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that gave me a great opportunity to get to know the folks that um, – we're over at Eagle Creek, Steve Barker, Ricky Schlesinger, um, you know, a number of great folks. And uh, so we, we developed a great relationship. And after about five years, I uh, was married at this point to Julie. Yeah. And um, it was time to get a, a real job, if you will. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, Julie definitely encouraged me to, to consider something um, a little more stable. And um, <laughs> my, you know, so... First real job was at Eagle Creek. Yeah. So in nine, this is now 1988, uh, I came over to a very small brand, um, just really getting into the pioneering of this category of adventure travel gear. Right. Yeah. And um, exciting ride. I was here uh, eight years back in the uh, 80s and uh, early 90s, yeah. and just saw you know dramatic change in not just this brand but the industry again. Yeah there wasn't a category of travel in out in the outdoor space. Right. And, um, I was originally hired as a marketing coordinator. Um, and I wrote, um, uh, they were known for, you know, I, I think you mentioned earlier, just great, um, tips and tools for preparing for travel. Yep. So they had yep. a thing called an adventure travel gear guide or right. tips to travel. And I was writing that and, um, traveling around the country, promoting this idea of outdoor shops should consider travel as a category mm -hmm. that not everybody rock climbs, backpacks, snowshoes, but right. everybody has to travel to go do those activities. Right. And it caught on. And I was, you know, so spending a lot of time on the road with the reps, um, selling in, uh, the Eagle Creek brand. And, uh, it was at that point, I think Ricky and or Steve, realized well why not just make tim the sales manager oh since that's he's how with, that happened okay got you. Yeah, yeah so since he's with the reps all the time right uh so that's how i sort of defined my my uh career path in sales right. <laughs> uh, was was that that particular moment right right right. that's and you were there eight years so i forgot i didn't realize it was that long yeah 
Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. And so do you like, did you, were you excited about the sales move or did you want to stay on the marketing side? How'd that, how'd you feel about that? No, you know, I, I've, I've always sort of, you know, even today, I don't necessarily put myself in a box of just being, you know, one thing. So still very actively, um, offering up my opinions in <laughs> marketing and yeah, product yeah, and, and yeah. definitely in sales. But yeah, uh, yeah I think, you know, the, the, the best part of me still in this career is, is getting out and getting into, you know, just great stores meeting with great individuals that are part of our industry. That's, right, right. that's what makes it special. I think that's why most of us have got into to this business. And yeah. so um, sales definitely allows for that. And well, a lot of this business, whether in sales or marketing, it's really all about stories, right? I mean, those, those are the best, that's the best way to expose people to new adventures and new things and, and sell product like you experienced at San Diego state, tell a great story and you got them hooked. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So, and then from Eagle Creek, you went on to some pretty iconic brands over the years. Any good stories from some of those brands? You're one of the first guys. What was, what was your, you sold all the, the pack brands. You're the I first guy they, to make the big four the, or big five or something. The trifecta. Trifecta. <laughs> I, I believe it was called the, the trifecta <laughs> being Eagle Creek, East pack and Jansport. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, after about eight years at, at, uh, Eagle <laughs> Creek was trying to, you know, figure out what the next step was for me. Um, you know, now been married for a while, have two daughters, uh, and um, had done a trip to Boston, just a vacation, hmm. and completely fell in love with uh, New England mm -hmm. and came back. And again, coincidentally enough, which has kind of been, you know, I think my life or career by circumstance, <laughs> uh, East Pack reaches out to me. That, oh. uh, they, they, had, um, they were privately held and had just sold to Coleman right. Camping right. and brought in a new team of executives, a couple of ex-Jan Sport leaders and, who knew me. And um, they reached out to me and said if I'd be interested in going to East Pack back in um, New Hampshire uh, and um, Massachusetts. Wow. And so talked to Julie and, you know, she was kind of going through a, maybe a, I'll call it a Martha Stewart phase where <laughs> we, you know, we had been to New England. We we're loving kind of that yeah, the yeah. lifestyle. And we said, let's go for it. Yeah. Which was a pretty dramatic move. You can imagine from San Diego, San Diego to New England. Yeah. That's pretty completely big Completely across the country right. um, to uh, New England, but we made the move. Um, great experience, a bigger brand um, definitely exposed me to a broader retail distribution yeah. that um that you know maybe at eagle creek wasn't quite uh, yeah. in, in on the radar and um but uh, yeah also exposed me to you know life uh, at, at, at a corporate level big publicly mm, held right, companies right. what i didn't know is that coleman was owned by revlon oh, okay and which interesting partnership but uh, after only a couple of years at east pack um, we were told that Revlon was selling Coleman to uh, Sunbeam. Oh, Chainsaw Al. <laughs> so Chainsaw Al Dunlap. So uh, um, nobody at Eastpac wanted to go down to Sunbeam and figure out what was going to happen to Eastpac. So right. they put me on a plane. I flew down to Fort Lauderdale. and um, But before the trip, I remember my wife went out and bought um, the book, called Mean Business, written by Chainsaw oh, Al Dunlap. Oh, and wow, yeah. Those listeners that don't know, uh, he's called Chainsaw Al because he's notorious for um, taking over large companies and completely just kind of slicing the workforce, right. you know, in half. And, just wiping and, out you know, whole divisions, yeah. Whole divisions, cutting yeah. down very, you know, very, you know, unfavorable to, you yeah. know, to the employees for sure. Yeah. But, um, so she, she went and bought me the book and read, read the book and <laughs> highlighted a couple pages that said <laughs> where, you know, where Al immediately fired somebody on the spot for saying a certain thing. So <laughs> she highlighted and said, Tim, don't, don't say, say that. that. <laughs> yeah. So wow. there I am. I'm, I'm, I'm at the Sunbeam offices. I walk in, I meet the receptionist. I go, I'm here for, you know, the East pack meetings and, um, or Coleman meetings. Um, but, if possible, I'd like to meet Al Dunlap. And she kind of smirked and like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I said, oh, that's a bummer because I'd love to have him sign my book. Uh -huh. And so I went and sat in, you know, sat in the conference room. We're having meetings, talking about, you know, explaining the brand, who we are, what our distribution is, what our size is. And it was pretty clear there was there was no interest in, in keeping the brand. Wow. So, um, but next thing you know, the door kind of squeaks open. The lady sticks her head in. She goes, uh, Mr. McGuire, uh, 
uh, Al, we'll see you now. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, uh, and everybody in the room looks around and goes, what? <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I guess his ego got the better of him, which yeah. is, you know, some guys in the office wants his book signed. But uh, I remember walking down the hall and uh, had to pass two armed guards. Wow. And uh, walked in and met Al Dunlap and spent about 45 minutes just talking to him really? about. Really interesting. Uh, the outdoors. He's an outdoors guy, but more of a, you know, hunter, fisherman. Yeah. Yeah. Big game hunter in Africa. And, huh. Anyway, like I said, I it was pretty clear that uh, they were going to just sell off East Pack. So right. uh, when I got back to the office, I kind of informed the team, you might want to start cleaning up your resumes and looking <laughs> yeah. around a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, first thing I did was reach out to uh, my friend Jim Thompson at um, Jansport. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim said, get on a plane, get out here. And um, I think it was as fast as two days later, I wow. was offered a job at Jansport. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and moving my family now to Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah. And, uh, and you were there for quite a few years. Yeah. So a lot of people yeah. in the industry do know me as the Jansport guy. Um, as it turned out, I would, over the years, uh, be part of an acquisition team to buy Eastpac. So no, Jansport right. was part of VF Corporation. Right. So had to go back to my company in Massachusetts and lay off 65 people Oh man! Uh, and tell them that we were going to just absorb it into the Jansport uh, business. And um, and then, uh, yeah, and with that, uh, Jim would end up moving to Europe mm -hmm. to run the Europe operations, yep. and I would take over uh, North America for Jansport. Right. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, great, <laughs> great place. Um, you know, kind of a... You got to work with Skip. He's, you know, fabulous yeah, man. Great guy, great came, friend of ours, yeah. Yeah, great family <laughs> friend. Uh, yeah, I first met Skip in 1984 when I was at A16 and did the Jansport climb. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, stayed friends with him over the years and then, um, literally was his neighbor. We chose not to live right in Appleton, but out in a small town called Hortonville oh, nice. and, um, you know, literally, uh, probably 500 yards from Skip's farm. Oh, wow. Cool. And so my kids know Skip as uncle Skip and yeah, yeah. When, his wife, Winnie and the kids, we spent most holidays together, a lot of time together, a lot, a lot of traveling and very cool. A lot of war stories. A lot of you know, Skip was definitely the the prankster. You know, I was always <laughs> nervous. Was. I'd, I'd I'd go on a trip and leave my car at the airport, and <laughs> next thing you know, I'm getting all these phone calls, people wanting to buy my car. Well, well, Skip had gone out and put for sale signs all over my <laughs> car at the airport for some ridiculously cheap price. And, and he um, was good so, at that. He always was. Yeah. Good at that. Yeah. So you always yeah. had to had to watch your back yeah. uh, when it was Skip. But um, well, let's... those are my transport years and. And then just quickly, uh, while there, um, yeah, uh, VF bought a brand called uh, the North Face. That's some right. Some of your listeners may be familiar with. Yeah. Uh, decided to create a uh, outdoor coalition. Yeah. And would eventually move Jansport out to San Leandro. And um, yeah, that I was had, the, that uh, was the that was how that coalition all got started, right? The purchase of North correct. Face. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because of that, and yeah, so yeah. anyway, I had left Jans. So I left Jansport. Kind of looking for the next, uh, again, next opportunity. And out of the blue, uh, Nike calls me um, through some sort of contact. Again, this is pre-LinkedIn. Yeah, right. And, pre um, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they were um, looking to change up their global bag business, accessory business, mm -hmm. to centralize it to create what they call the center of excellence, and looking for somebody to head that up. So um, my wife and I flew to to Oregon and uh, I spent the day at Nike. She spent the day looking for, you know, possible homes for our yeah, family. Yeah. And uh, after just a couple of days, I was offered a job and we said, let's do it. And, and you were there for we, another, what, five, six years, right? Yeah. About six yeah, years yeah. Uh, at Nike, yeah. which um, I think, yeah, for me, Rick, what's been great with my you know, various career moves, it's, it comes down to, you know, how you look at business and, um, this idea of scale, you know, when I was at yeah. Eagle Creek back in the day, everything was pretty much measured by REI. That was the yeah. retailer that defined whether you're, you're doing well or not. Yeah. Um, in the outdoor world. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. In the outdoor world. And then yeah. I go to East pack and say, well, yeah, REI is great retailer, but what about sports authority right. or Dick sporting goods? And <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, then I go to Jansport and it's like, well, REI is nice retailer, sports authority, Dick Sporting Goods, those are great accounts, but what about 
Target? What about, what about Target? Costco? Yeah, right. well, yeah we're, you know, right. where are consumers going to buy products? And then, and then there I am at Nike, and it's like, yeah, all those retailers are great, but what about China? <laughs> you know, and, like, yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. we're going after China. Yeah, and um, so yeah, it was great. I loved it. I know a lot of people. It's, it can be overwhelming. It's a, a pretty complex offense that they run there. Yeah, yeah. But um, I really enjoyed it. Again, being a former soccer player, getting back back to sport. Right, right. Competitive guy. Um, no, it was a great intense. experience for you too. I mean, yep. you learned all kinds of different business models, which is fabulous. It's got to help you help you in your career back now at Eagle Creek. All that's got to help you. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so all was good and then um what was it 2008 came along which was the the great recession. The, right, the crash. Um Nike was getting attacked by Under Armour which had just mm-hmm. come on strong and so they decided to reorganize, downsize and they eliminated the entire equipment division which I was working for. So wow. uh so laid off with somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 people. Oof. Um which is tough anywhere but again yeah, five thousand yeah. people in Oregon now all scattering looking for jobs yeah, and right but uh you know stuck with it um knew that I you know my passion was definitely with the outdoor um marketplace and fortunately I um I spent about nine months doing some different projects out of the house mm-hmm. uh, but um got to know a guy named Rory first mm-hmm. uh, R- Rory Kind of a lot of people don't know him. He's not very visible in the marketplace, but he's the founder and owner of Keen Footwear. Right. Yeah. Also owns brands like Chrome Equipment and right. um, the, a couple other small like bag sock companies. So you got to and, stay in Oregon too. Yeah. So oh, that's cool. Uh, so a little bit of a wild ride there, and that I initially started working for Rory specifically. Uh, oh, directly called, for Rory. Okay. Called Rofu. Uh-huh. which um, sort of worked as a hub managing the accessory businesses for for uh, multiple brands, including Keen. But um, uh, the, the president of Keen back then was um, James Curley, JC, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, got to know JC. And he strongly encouraged that I go work for Keen um, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. specific and, you know, and directly help out their business and their brand. So mm-hmm. uh, made the move to Keen, worked for Keen for three years. But even after Nike, I, I, I remember telling myself, I don't want to work for a big footwear company again and be the accessory guy. It's no, kind of right. a little bit of something unfulfilling and gratifying about that. Yeah, you're kind and, of an ancillary player. Your category is yeah. an ancillary player. You're not really that, you know, you're important, but not, you know, you're not, you're not at the main table. Yeah. 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 Kind of the back row, waving your hand, say, don't forget <laughs> about yeah. We make this stuff too. And then, right. you know, there I am at Keen, uh, being working for a big footwear company, being an accessory guy. So yeah. kind of kept my eyes and ears open. And um, thanks to Ricky Schlesinger, um, he had strongly encouraged me to consider coming back to Eagle Creek. Wow. And um, timing was right. Um, kids were growing up. Um, my wife's family is getting a little bit older. We um, were thinking about where we would want to spend um time going forward and mm-hmm. so this idea of moving back to southern california back to san diego made a lot of sense me coming back to eagle creek made a lot of sense yeah um got to know um, roger spatz who's the the president of eagle creek and uh, really enjoyed uh, getting to know him and understand his style what he was trying to do with the brand so um yeah and i want to say 2014 um uh, came back the boomerang effect yeah, eighteen years <laughs> later. But um, but yeah, different you know, different company now part yeah. of EF. Yeah. Ricky and Steve are gone, but yeah. um, you know, still same kind of unique brand and um this passion for adventure. Um, yeah, back to adventure travel. Yep, that's exciting. Yeah, and that's you, how I was, you know, we always you know, we talk about today. We don't you know, we don't we don't really have consumers, we have fellow travelers. We're right. all we all travel a lot. You know, we're sort of speaking to ourselves when we're talking about product strategy or marketing strategy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, anyway, cool. and good time. We've, yeah. we've been on a good run uh, the last four years. And you're involved in some. You're involved in some nonprofit work now down there, right? Or you got involved yeah. with that in Oregon, didn't you? Pacific Trail. I, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, somewhat random. I'm sitting in. Uh, I want to say the Keen booth at uh, OR show, mm-hmm. and a, a wonderful lady walks in uh, Liz Bergeron uh, from Pacific Crest Trail Association 
just wanted to introduce herself, talk about the Pacific Crest Trail Association, the work that they were doing. <laughs> and, um, and it got me thinking that, you know, when I was back at Adventure 16 as the Adventure Travel Director, we used to host a variety of uh, adventurers that would come through. We'd give slideshows. And, right, right. and one of them uh, was a, a, a young kid who had just completed the, um, the Pacific Crest Trail. Um, and uh, I, I remember being fascinated by that, this mm-hmm. idea of not doing something fast or doing something that's the highest, but right. something that's just really long. Long, yeah. That was and my goal out of college. Of I was, that's, I was on my list. Never made it, but yeah. Yeah. So his name was Tom Marshburn. He would go on to be a, an astronaut. NASA, oh, wow. walk, walk in space, and um, has had a tremendous career. But it, it stuck with me, and I was explaining this to, to Liz, and she's like, wow, you know, you should, you should get involved. And, yeah. um, and so I go, well, how can I do that? And she said, well, we do have a, a board seat open. Oh, cool. uh, they at, at the time had nobody in Oregon uh, on the Pacific Crest Trail Association board. And so I said, sign me up. Very I good. had never been on a board before. So I saw it as an opportunity to, to learn a little bit about that experience, right, but, sure. but also selfishly, um, keep that dream alive of someday hiking mm. the whole trail. Nice. So, yeah. um, joined the board and shortly after that, um, Keen announced that they were offering up a grant of, I believe it was $10,000 to the employee, um, who could, um, who would nominate their favorite nonprofit. Hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, I got to nominate, uh, yeah. PCTA. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I, so I, I remember filling out the application and writing about, you know, one of the world's longest trails, national scenic treasure, um, cuts right through our backyard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. you know, not far from Portland, Mount hood, the right. trail yeah. close by um, yeah. cuts around. And so I'm like, God, I think this is a pretty good story, but I need a closer. And my closer was if, if you donate the $10,000 <laughs> to PCTA, I will hike the Oregon section. <laughs> um, again, another situation like Mount Whitney, I had no idea what I was <laughs> saying or signing up for. Right. Well, uh, you, but you'd been on backpack trip. By that point, you'd been, a, you were a backpacker. You sort of. Yeah, but not for a long time. I, you know, I, I was a, you know, young 20 year old backpacker. Well, you know, right, right. Yeah. In my, you know, early fifties. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and of course, yeah, I, I, I win the the grant (laughs) and now I've got to do this hike from the California border to the Washington border. Um, So trying to plan for that, I wasn't, I didn't have the opportunity to take a whole month off. I was going to say, you didn't, you didn't commit to doing it all at once. Did you, you just said you'd get it done. Not yeah. Initially I said over two years I would do it. Okay. Uh, But next thing you know, there's a big giant map of the PCT up in the office (laughs) Press release goes out to wow. McGuire to hike to hike the PCT, and um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got to do it. Yeah. And um, so I spent a lot of time just sort of mapping out my strategy, which was to do it over a series of trips during that summer. Oh, okay, so, all in one summer. So wow, that's pretty quick. All in one summer. Wow. Yeah. So I had to, you know, I had to work an outdoor retailer, had to work in some yeah. other business trips. Yeah. And, um, this so. On July 4th weekend, I um, uh, got a ride from my wife to the Greyhound bus station <laughs> in Woodburn and uh, not just, I mean, just south of Lake Oswego where we were living mm-hmm. and took a, about a five hour bus ride down to Medford where I then had to um, hitchhike to Mount Ashland. Mm-hmm. Or and up. yeah. And uh, so this was your first, this is your first. In, uh, PCT adventure for this first project. PCT first, adventure, okay, probably, yeah. you know, first backpacking trip in at least 10 years. Wow. Yeah. So I'm loaded up. I've got a big Gregory pack. It's got, you know, <laughs> a big stick of salami, bag of <laughs> string cheese. I've got my iPad. I've oh, got all this stuff. What'd that and, thing weigh? Do you remember? Oh, uh, it was plus 60. Wow. Yeah. Oh. And, um, the bummer was where I got dropped off at the ski area I had to hike 16 miles the wrong direction south to get to the California oh, border. Wow! Which unfortunately, they didn't design the trail. I'm, I'm working on this um, close to Highway Five. I, <laughs> it's inland quite a bit, so yeah. I had to hike 16 miles south to get to the California Oregon PCT sign. Holy get cow. the pi- get the picture taken, right. the selfie, and then turn around and start heading north. And, um, so I would spend, yeah, I spent 27 days that summer on the PCT 
half of it by myself, half of it with um, other keeners and outdoor industry folks that would sign up to hike with me. And all kind of and, a weekend warrior thing, right? You do it on the weekends yeah, when you had time. And yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, like I'd leave on a Friday at noon, um, try to hike about 10 miles Friday afternoon. And then I'd have to do 20 miles each day, right. Saturday, Sunday, get wow. back. I had two full week sections where I would hike, you know, hundred, 150 miles at a time. Yeah. Uh, but quite, yeah, quite the adventure. I would, you know, literally be at Starbucks in the morning, <laughs> ordering a latte and a scone and then next thing you know i'm on a trail bent over a, a, a creek wa- wafting off the mosquito larva trying to get a sip of water oh my god just just groveling right. and um so yeah i found it incredibly hard for me yeah um the first 200 had you done any training or are you just off the couch i did a pretty you know me it was a lot of off the couch but <laughs> I, I, you know, I read a lot about it. I, you know, I was, I was well prepared. Yeah, but physical of, training, Tim. Come on, reading about physical training. Did you, yeah. did you walk at all? Did you do any walking? Anything? I, I did a little bit in our neighborhood, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Um, you know, again, you can convince yourself. Like I can, I yeah, can right, walk. Right. Who, who can't walk? <laughs> right. Um, and uh, but yeah, I, I, again, bit off way more than I can chew. It was over wow. my head. The first couple hundred miles were very physical. Yeah. Um, as sad as it was, I worked for Keen, but I got a lot of blisters. Oh. Well, chafing just, everywhere, yeah. dehydrated, and I'm literally thinking, "Is I gotta, I gotta quit, or I'm gonna cheat." I, <laughs> I remember at one at one moment, I was so tired and exhausted. My um, son, who who played soccer, one of his uh, friends on the team, um, hurt his leg, hurt his ankle. His dad took him to the doctor's office, and he emailed out to everybody a picture of an X-ray saying, "Yeah, he he broke his ankle." And wow. there was an X. So I had in my possession an X-ray of a broken ankle, <laughs> and I I plotted to like, I'm going to tell people I have a stress fracture, and I can no longer continue on this thing. That was my, that was <laughs> that my was your out. story. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, I can't do can't it. Do and then that. I, but yeah, you. I mean, you consider. I'm thinking about cheating. What am I going to do? But <laughs> but I but I stuck with it. And awesome. then you know, and then the last couple hundred miles, it was more. You know, I'm in shape. I I I. I lightened my pack considerably yeah, yeah. Um, you know i'm down to you know probably right around 20 pounds at this point nice, you you know, very efficient yeah. and but then it's you know i'm doing 20 30 miles a day and it's what do you think about when you're right, just walking right. all that time and right. um and and people were my enemy and my fear was i would run into people on the trail because i had to do this distance and I, I remember they were people were more shocking to me than than animals jumping out of the bushes <laughs> because you'd see this bright color after you know just hours of being oh, right, right. by yourself and, and, green, like, oh, yeah. no. and the problem with people was they'd want to talk yeah and you know they'd want to ask questions where are you going and I you're on a mission you had to go yeah yeah right. you know where are you going or you know what's in your pack and, right. and then the the one thing everybody asked was have you read the book wild mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And um, I, yeah, yep, I lied and I said I did <laughs> because I, I I tried reading the book and I honestly didn't get it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the book I was was expecting. I wanted a guidebook on the PCT. Oh and, right, yeah, it was um, not you know, that. Right. And, and obviously, this was about Cheryl's personal journey and a great book. And I right. come to know Cheryl pretty well. She's been incredibly supportive uh, of the PCTA. Yeah, and, I reached uh, out to her to try to get her on the show. Yeah, if I can help with that, let me know. But will, um, yeah, she did. Thanks. She did a couple of speaking events uh, at Keene uh, on b- behalf of the PCTA, and cool. um, attended the premiere of the movie Wild with her. Oh wow! Awesome. And um, yeah, and even got to um, when they were filming. Um, the The book rights were bought by Reese Witherspoon, um, and her production company worked yep, with uh, yep. Fox Searchlight, and PCTA was part of the filming. We were oh cool um, brought in to help. I, I think it was described as authenticate the trail experience so gotcha. uh-huh. i got out on a couple of filmings and got to you know meet some of the the, the actors uh, that cool. were involved in that wow. and yeah yeah pretty Very neat fun. but yeah. um but anyway so i would you know be walking all day and trying to figure out what to think about and mostly thought about drinking <laughs> and those that know me not this this wasn't the drinking i typically think about i would i became obsessed with um and i don't, i'd never drink this but like uh, lemon lime sodas huh. so for hours so for hours i would walk and think about just how how good a, a sprite would taste or i mm. feel no a seven up no what about a mountain dew or right and I, I could i could name i could name them all squirt uh 
Fresca, and I would just think about that all day. And of course, <laughs> when I got off the trail, that's, I, I, that that's was, what I, you're I right. That was for. not the drinking I pictured. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But anyway, no that beers. was uh, a few years ago, and great. My yeah, my goal now is not to to section hike the PCT, but hopefully get in a position where I can get dropped off in Campo at the Mexican border and, and just start heading north. Wow. Awesome. Someday. Well, good thing you didn't pick this year. Jeez. Tough year for sure. Tough year. Well, and you know, it was first the snows down here and now they're getting pushed, put, pushed back by the fires up north. It's just been yeah. brutal. Yeah. Yeah. They actually lost a couple people. Yeah. Um, the, uh-huh. yeah. the river crossings as a result of the snow melt has yeah. been a big challenge for folks. Pretty rough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, let's see. Let's. So, what other outdoor activities do you participate in? You obviously well, still hike. Still hike, and um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it glamping. Um, okay. You know, Julie and I are empty nesters. Our, our youngest just headed off to college, and so we've been on a mission you know, mission of just trying to get uh, at least one big road trip in a month. Oh, cool. Um, so, in the last year, um, we've been to. Redwood National Park, Joshua Tree, Yosemite. Yeah. Uh, I've been out to Bryce and Zion. Um, Julie and I were just in Rocky Mountain National Park. We uh, rafted the Green River. Man. So I, I, I say glamping because for me now, I've, I've stepped it up. You know, we, I bought a, <laughs> a big Agnes four-person tent. I went and got the you know, two-burner Coleman stove and the, the whole right, kitchen right. set up. Yeah, and, very cool. Yeah. Um, as you know, it's all about illumination these days. So we yeah. get the, the lighting for the, the campsite. And then the, the game changer um, for us, not very romantic, but um, it, it makes a big difference when you're, <laughs> when you're my age, is uh, we bought two cots. Oh, interesting. So cots are great. Um, so you're not sleeping on the ground. You're on cots. You're, okay. Yeah, you're not sleeping yeah. on the ground, but yeah. you're not, you know, you can sit up, right. you know, put your boots on in your tent. You can right. sit up and drink wine or play cards in your tent. Uh, it's just a, a different experience. So so we've been doing that, having a ton of fun. But, of course, that leads you to spending a lot of time in campgrounds and observing the whole culture right. of Right. You know what's going on out there, which is RVs, the world of RVs. Yeah, it's all, yeah exactly. Um, trailers and vans. Trailers and vans. And yeah. What do I do? So, kind of, you know, trying to figure that out. What what we might want to do there, uh-huh. but yeah, uh, cool. but having fun with that. And um, one of the things that we, one of the campgrounds we were at, we were next to a, a couple that had one of those um, uh, teardrop trailers. Oh right. And mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and there's amazing vehicles in this park. You know, big class a yeah, rvs right, yeah, and right. you know people have you know land rovers range rovers that are you know airstream yeah. silver to match their airstream trailer and yeah. but to me the coolest thing i saw was this little teardrop trailer and um because it was you know it was, it was so exposed this family was you know outside cooking in the galley in the back and very welcome to let people look inside and yeah because with one of those thing. with one of those you really all you do is sleep in it everything else you do outside right it's, yeah, it's a so, true camping so, experience. Yeah, I yeah, that's exactly it. So I was like, that that's cool. That's that's yeah. that's that way to do it. And, yeah. Um. So I came back and I was telling Roger about, I think I want a teardrop trailer, and I explained the reasons why, and um, and he goes, well, maybe maybe Eagle Creek should get one. Huh. So uh, so I went to work um, uh, on a project which I I called um, Project Eagle's Nest. <laughs> <laughs> and put a whole pitch together to the marketing department on why we should um, consider buying our own um, Eagle Creek teardrop trailer. Oh, cool. So yeah. um, apparently they did a well enough job that uh, we're doing that. So we're building one wow, now up in Oregon. Awesome. Company out of Salem. Um, we're looking for a tow vehicle. It should This thing should be done the end of October. Really? Uh, and the soon. idea here is it's it's used for mobile marketing. You know, we'll we'll, we'll travel around and you know, various retailer events or trade events. And and Tim um, gets to use it on the weekends. And Tim and other employees get to oh, okay, use yeah. it on the weekends. Yeah. And yeah, and that's the idea is, you know, we're out there and we're Creekers and, you know, just a chance to engage with, you know, fellow travelers, fellow campers. And, really good and idea. Yeah. Kind of talking to our band. So kind of a cool thing going on here. So do you, are you going to get to take it on its maiden voyage? In October, I, I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm waiting to see <laughs> what what they do. I would think I get some some special privileges. I would for, think it was your idea. Yeah, come on. Yeah, so so we'll see. But, yeah, uh, awesome. but that that'll be fun. Yeah, cool. Um, how about some favorite books? Do you have any favorite books, or do you give books as gifts? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you asked this question, and you know, 
unlike a lot of your your guests, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. Um, <laughs> Everybody's honest. You know, Come on, yeah, I've had I, people I say they so. don't read. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I do. I read at least one book a year, just so I can say I read one more than Jeff Sheets. <laughs> and um, uh, but I I I don't. I you know I absorb information a lot through my work, through right, right. just you know surfing the internet, talking to people, you know. Uh, but I, you know, I do read, I think, I don't know. What did the you last read? Book I, I was gonna say, yeah, what I, book, what book did you read this year or have you finished it yet? You haven't, well, I, oh, no, you I haven't started one it was, yet. <laughs> it was a short, it was a short book with uh big, big type and, um, <laughs> and you are probably familiar with it. Uh, it's called make your bed, you know, little things that change your oh, life. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, ex Navy yeah. seal. My wife, my wife uh, gave it to me. I guess you know yeah. there's some story. sort of That's hint, and yeah. yeah, it was good. You know, just little lessons about you know how to how to start your day and yeah, be get prepared. Stuff done. And yeah, yeah, gave it to my son. I don't think he's read it, but he definitely <laughs> could learn from it. But um, but That's yeah, good. no, that yeah, that's one. And yeah, definitely love um, adventure books. You know, I've read almost you know all the Everest early Everest books. Right, uh, a lot right. of John, a lot of John Muir. Right, but um. No, I like I like walking. You know, like I said if I have if I have free time or I need to relax, I I, I tend to yeah. to get up and, and go outside. I'll it's not unusual for me to walk today even 10, 15 miles on the weekend. Wow, along, that's awesome. Good for you. Along the beach and you know, yeah. Encinitas and Good Cardiff and um uh, So yeah. so now that you're a glamper, what's your best outdoor gear purchase under a hundred bucks? Were your cots uh, under a hundred bucks? Probably not. They were, I bought them at Walmart, so they I think they were 30, <laughs> 30 bucks each. Okay. Uh, so those are those were good. You know, I'm I'm tempted to say packet just as a little uh, plug sure. for for the brand. I do use it. It's 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 a great item. I use them to this um, day. They're awesome. Yeah. I mean, my go to backpacking item. It's not technically gear, but it, it's an essential. Is top ramen. Top I, ramen. I I live for an a, you know an, a trip. Just so that I can, you know, have the excuse to just chow on top ramen. Gotcha. I, okay. I think it's under a, a buck, not even a hundred. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think I'm not sure how I can link to that in the show notes, but we'll figure out a way. <laughs> yeah, definitely a big fan of top ramen on a, yeah. a backpacking trip. And now I'm eating um, Oriental top ramen. Ramen, as you may know, um, about almost three months now, I became uh, or mm, not. Right. I haven't become a vegan, but I am um, challenging myself with a vegan diet. Mm-hmm. Um, which is not easy um, when you're in sales, right, traveling around right, the country, uh, right. going to a lot of nice restaurants. And it's definitely not easy when backpacking, right. when you think of those, you know, core staple backpack foods like right. jerky or string cheese or right. salami, whatever it might be. So, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's been interesting. But I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it, definitely feeling, feeling better, losing cool. a little bit yeah, of weight. Good. And we'll see where it goes. Well, the walking, I'm sure, helps with that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anything you want to ask of our audience or say to our audience? Yeah, I think, you know, to me, you know, hopefully these are opportunities for folks to learn, understand how, you know, it, it's different paths get you to where you are. Yep. There's not one yep. right way. I've, you know, I've been very fortunate to kind of this again by circumstance yeah. ended up, uh, having terrific roles and great brands and, um, terrific family that's been very patient with me. Um, you know, when it comes to advice, you know, choose great companies, you know, I think companies that you'd like to work for, but, mm-hmm. um, that you share interests with, or, you know, you, you appreciate what they're doing. But, yeah. um, um, I've been very fortunate in choosing great bosses. Um, you know, mm. I always, you know, pay attention to that. You know, whether yeah, it was Mick Mead at Adventure 16, yeah. Ricky and Steve in the early days at Eagle Creek, Paul Delory, Jan Score, yeah. Peter Rupi at Nike, um, yeah. just, you know, Choose your bosses wisely. And, That's good advice. Um, That's good. And um, and yeah, enjoy yeah. your passion. Go, you know, don't be afraid to. As I said a couple times during the interview, don't be afraid to bite off more than you can chew. Take risks. Be bold. Well, that's a, that's interesting. I think that's a common theme throughout the the history of the outdoor biz, right? I mean, we all some of us have been around since the beginnings of this thing, and we all have bitten off more than we could chew at some point in another because we're starting the whole thing. So it's it's turned out pretty well. So. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, I know you sometimes ask about, you know, what's the future of, of retail and, and I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I certainly don't know. And, uh, but amazed how much I learn every day about how much it's changing and, yeah. 
um, just fascinated by the whole, you know, online aspect of, of our business today and how to navigate that. But right. yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I hope, I hope it, you know, it involves what I said in the beginning, you know, what it ultimately it's walking into that store and seeing the log cabin and the old dog laying on the floor and yeah, it's listening to the, listening to the cricket tapes and smelling right. campfire memories. I mean, that's, right. I hope it that never goes away. Well, and I'm glad to hear that a lot of folks are getting back to that. I think we got away from that a little bit and then we were so, so concerned about the sale that we, you know, lost sight of the story. And like you said, a lot of people come in and buy because of the story, because of the environment. So it seems like we're getting back to that. That's, that's a healthy thing. Yeah, I opinion. hope so. Yeah, cool. And uh, how can people find you? Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, email. What's the? Yeah, all of those. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't tweet. I think is the only one that I'm not uh, not uh, active on. But um, definitely cool. Facebook, LinkedIn, and have an Instagram account. And um, you know, feel free to email me at uh, you know Tim underscore mcguire at bfc.com all right, anytime. Cool. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll put that in the show notes. Awesome. Well, thanks, Tim. It's been fun. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Um, it was fun. Good to kind of go back and, and think about things. I forgot about, about that Jeff Saul story. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he actually we had him come speak at our uh, our last sales meeting. Oh, cool, and, um, cool. Yeah, and it was about storytelling, and, um, Perfect. which was cool because it involved my story and his. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, you and Julie got to get up to Bishop someday. Will do. And uh, I'll, I'll look you up next time I'm in Carlsbad. All right, Rick. All right, thanks, thanks a lot. Bud. All right. Take care. All right, bye-bye. All right, all right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Tim McGuire. You can connect with Tim on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, or email him at tim underscore McGuire at vfc.com. McGuire is spelled M-C-G-U-I-R-E. You'll find links to all the info we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episodes slash 035. I appreciate the support and feedback. Please be sure and share your favorite episodes on the socials. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. This episode's featured advocacy group is the California Wilderness Coalition. Cal Wild is a nonprofit whose mission is to protect and restore the wildest landscapes and watersheds on California's public lands. Since 1976, Cal Wild has helped protect over 14 million acres of wilderness and 1,500 miles of wild and scenic rivers. The organization helps bridge the gap between local stewards who know their public lands intimately and the state and federal agencies that manage those lands, forming valuable partnerships at all levels. When you become a member today at the $65 family level, they'll send you a copy of Tim Palmer's book, California Glaciers, for free. Join today at calwild.org biz. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher or go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Outdoor Biz Podcast, Twitter at Rick underscore Says, that's S-A-E-Z, and my email is rick at the outdoorbizpodcast.com. Thanks for listening and all the support, and a huge shout out to all my guests. And until next time, be sure to make time to get outside. Mm-hmm.